Hello, welcome back to another episode of Ex Explosions and Fire! Today we're going to be talking about one of the greatest skills you can have as a chemist, and that's the ability to hold a good grudge. You've got to be extremely biased against certain chemicals. And there's always lots of things that most chemists will just refuse to work with, such as like hydrofluoric acid or osmium tetroxide, the physics department. But for me, the things I really don't want to work with is ammonia gas, sulfur chlorides, and anything that's vaguely the color yellow. Yes, so I have these extreme prejudices against these chemicals, and they all stem from the same place. A few years ago on the Science Manners forums, I stumbled across a guy who claimed his favorite explosive was this obscure compound that no one had ever heard of before called tetrasulfur tetranitride. This guy said it was a great explosive because it was so easy to make. All you need are toluene, sulfur, dry ammonia, and dry chlorine. Hey, that sounds pretty easy. Fucking easy as. Just the best explosive. No worries. Well, I tried it a few years ago and the fucking synthesis nearly broke me. Sounds easy and convenient. If it actually bloody worked! Eat mega shit dicks. I was trying for months to get the synthesis right. This fucking one throwaway sentence that this guy had just written on an internet forum was months of my life. You know, first with just shitty jam jars that I just kind of taped together and rubber tubing straight into the molten sulfur. That didn't work too well. I generated a lot more chlorine than uh, I probably should have been around. And then I got some more glassware and I was just bloody always trying to generate this ammonia and like if you don't dry the gas as well enough it destroys your end product. But I was always getting this weird end product that I thought could have been it but it was never explosive and it was always just weird sulfur at the end and fuck I spent so long on it and I'm still not bloody over it. After a while it just stopped being fun because you've got your sulfur chlorides which smell like shit and you've got your ammonia which smells like piss and you're fucking just putting them together and just getting your starting material back and you're like what am I doing with my life? I smell like piss and shit and all I have is fucking sulfur. So here we are in the year of our lord 2019. At this point, what started out as a conspiracy, I now believe is fact, right? All yellow chemistry is trash. If your synthesis at any point goes yellow, it just stops working, alright? But that's not what keeps me up at night, you know? What keeps me up at night was the fact that I was fucking beaten by a synthesis. Now I have to do the synthesis right, and it's not only about just getting the final product. It's about proving that I'm better than I was five years ago. Am I actually any better at chemistry than I was? It's actually fucking personal. It's about growth, and I'm not actually taking it that seriously. Man, this video is dramatic. First step is we need to make sulfur chlorides. All right, so we need to have molten sulfur and then we need to generate chlorine and pass chlorine through it while simultaneously distilling the sulfur chlorides and keeping everything dry because if there's any water in it, it'll destroy our sulfur chlorides and just revert it back to sulfur. So, yep, we do it easy as fucking taste only a day and we fucking get our end product it's red so it's mostly sulfur dichloride instead of sulfur monochloride which is good because it means it's not fucking yellow we need dry dichloromethane easy as got that fine now we need to generate ammonia dry the ammonia through a cold trap and like sieves and sodium carbonate and then put the ammonia into the flask right it generates a lot of ammonium chloride as byproduct oh, fuck me. and that's when things started to get Pretty weird, because I thought a lot of the ammonium chloride would just stay in the flask, you know, like a normal byproduct maybe would. But instead, the reaction just decided to snow everywhere. Just, just random pink byproduct just fucking snowing out all the reaction. It was so bad that I actually had to go get a Graham condenser, my least favorite condenser to use to try and at least wrap some of the ammonium chloride from just snowing everywhere. A few hours later, our pink snow is now brown snow, and that's progress. So we're actually nearing the end of the reaction at this point. However, all the dichloromethane in the flask dries up and I've run out of dichloromethane. And so instead I'm forced to put in some toluene into the flask. And this is important, right? Because we end up with our end product, which is some random green compound. And the next step from the paper we're following, we're actually following a proper science paper from the 60s. Fuck me, I love the 60s. The next step in the paper is to take our green product and put it through a soxylic extraction using dry dioxane. So that's easy enough. We just spent about four weeks drying the dioxane, generating it from ethylene glycol. You know, no worries, whatever. We run the soxylic extraction. We get our yellow liquid out of the green solid. This is weird. 
And turns out we don't actually even need that because all of our product ends up being in the toluene solvent. That was weird. Then filter. But hey, we're getting these orange crystals out. Recrystallize them from benzene. Remember, benzene, it's back. <laughs> we recrystallize it, we get these huge orange crystals. And that's our end product. We've actually fucking done it. And it looks like carrot for some reason. Maybe I'm just hungry, but it really looked like carrot. But orange is okay. Yellow, bad, orange, okay. And somewhere in the middle is... I haven't worked that out yet. That's fine. I have proof that I'm a better person now than I was, you know, personal growth. But now what? What? What is actually our end product? What the fuck are we even making? Tetrasulfur tetranitride is this really weird structure. It's basically a ring, but a very distorted ring of sulfur and nitrogen. There's a lot of ring strain, and also you have half of your atoms in this ring is nitrogen. So of course it's going to be explosive. If we put a match to it, we see it burns. Okay, no, that actually is carrot. That's weird. This is a sulfur nitride. Whoa. If we compare this to elemental sulfur, we can see that it melts slowly and then burns quite calmly, which is quite a contrast to our newly created S4N4. It does detonate when hit with a hammer in much the same way that carrot won't detonate when hit with a hammer. Whoa. We actually get a proper detonation and we get a really large fireball from it, which is very interesting. And it actually points out the big flaw that this explosive has. There's something really wrong with it. To have a good explosive, you need lots of gas generation. You also need to go to like stable products. This explosive, one of its byproducts is nitrogen, which of course is very stable. So you get a lot of energy out of that nitrogen. But the other byproduct, the sulfur, you just don't get a whole lot of energy out of it. Sure, you're taking the sulfur from a strained ring, but then you're forming elemental sulfur. And that's kind of a bit of a dead weight. What you really want is that to go to sulfur dioxide, really lower in potential energy and actually have a gas that can expand. So what's actually happening is that ring is expanding exploding and then the sulfur is being released and then the sulfur has to then react further with the air it means that your energy output from the explosive is just not as good as you'd expect really a lot of explosives will get better as you can find them because that gas pressure will be able to build up in a very quick time scale is a lot easier than being just unconfined out in the open but of course because sulfur tetranitride needs the oxygen from the air to get a lot of its energy out from the you just get no energy out of a confined sulfur tetranitride so we need to blow it up with another explosive. We collect together basically all my remaining sulfur nitride, which is about 50 milligrams, and we put it towards one final test, which of course goes wrong, because of course it always does. A bit of an unfair test because this one was lying face down on the ground so it's kind of a little bit tamped against the ground whereas this one was freestanding but I still think there was some impact of the sulfur nitride you can see that yellowing around the edges there incomplete combustion it's probably leftover sulfur so it does actually work as an explosive although uh not that well but you can can still detonate it can't do that with normal sulfur oh god that can smells now one cool thing about this compound is that it's thermochromic. So if we heat it up very slowly, we can see it goes red, and then we cool it back down, we let it cool back down, it goes back to being orange at room temperature. Apparently, if we cool it down even further, it goes to more of a yellow, but I'm not going to do that, because yellow is fucking disgusting, and I still haven't moved on from that grudge. Holy shit, I have issues. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed this video. We've had some personal growth, and I've managed to prove one guy on the internet writing two sentences many years ago about some obscure compound. I proved him wrong, I think. Whoever you are, fuck you. Thanks a lot to my Patreons. I have a Discord. We've cracked 500 members somehow. The best bit about finishing this video is that I never have to do this chemistry again. I, I might, but God, it smells awful. Even in here, it still smells like someone's fucking pissed and shit all over everything.